So once we finished our ANOVA test and we find that we can reject the null hypothesis, we're not done at this point. Remember that ANOVA is an omnibus test. It tests for the overall differences between the groups. So it tells us that at least one group is different, but it doesn't tell us which one. So we have two things that we need to do. We need to compute confidence intervals for the differences between the groups. That is, what is the difference between group one and group two? What is the difference between group one and group three? What's the difference between group two and group three? And then we need to run what are called post hoc tests. And post hoc basically means these are significance tests that will run after we've done everything else. So the confidence interval is basically a formula. And we break it here into three parts. The first leftmost part is simply just the difference between the groups. Y i bar is basically the first group mean. Y j bar is basically the second group mean. We just subtract the two and say, this is the difference. But we're creating a confidence interval. So we'll need to do plus and minus so that we take a little bit on the right side and a little bit on the left side and have an estimate of where the true difference really lies. The rightmost part is basically a pooled error. This is a calculation of determining the overall error based on the group sizes. You can see that it has the mean square within the groups and then it has the observations of each of the groups as part of its computation. The more interesting part is going to be this multiplier for the confidence level, what we're going to call M. This M will change based on how conservative or liberal we want our confidence interval to be. Do we want a na more narrow confidence interval? Do we want a wider confidence interval? And this is called the correction factor. Using a standard T statistic for M, we're going to call this the no correction method. So if we're looking for a 95% confidence interval using the T distribution, we remember from previous modules, we can obtain the value for T at 0.05 level. This critical value is basically determined as 1 minus 0.05 divided by 2. The reason we do that is because it's the two tails that we want of the T distribution with degrees of freedom N1 plus N2 minus G which in our case, the number of observations in one plus the number of observations in two minus the number of groups. So in this case, we will use t.inv.975. That corresponds to the one minus 0.05 divided by two here, comma 18, because we have 20 total observations, 10 in one group, 10 in the other group, and we're subtracting two for the number of groups that we're comparing. And this will give us our computed value of t at 2.10. We can then compute the confidence intervals by plugging these numbers in to the formula that we had before. This table has each of the individual parts and we can see that it creates a lower bound and an upper bound. And so what this is saying is, is that the, the true difference between the groups will lie between negative 4.62 and negative 0.78 for the no sound versus the jazz sound. Now you can see that difference column in the third column here. And so it's pretty clear that it lies in between the lower bound and the upper bound, which is where it should. If it doesn't, you should check your calculations. But the critical point here is, is that we're assuming that if that lower bound and upper bound does not have zero within it, in other words, if both are negative and, or both are positive, it doesn't span zero, which means that the probability of it being zero is extremely low, at least lower than our significance level. If, however, the lower bound and upper bound does span zero, meaning one is positive and one is negative, then it means that there is a good chance that the difference is truly zero. Good enough that we can say that statistically there's no difference between the groups.